Okay, you're all set. Okay, um, and when do you unmute everybody? Um, do you want me to just go ahead and do that now? That's fine. The only one I can't unmute is Ken Urban. I'm trying to, but uh oh, it says ask to unmute. So I've asked, but he hasn't done it yet. How do you unmute on your phone again, Heather? Oh, there we go. We're all set. I think we've got everyone. Okay, cool. Um, Barry, are you good with taking minutes since uh, Kelly can't join us this morning? Um, yes, Kelly and I talked about that yesterday. Okay, great. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order at 8.05 um, and um, do the roll call. Uh, Tamara Deponio. Present. Jody Walter. Here. Thad Taylor. Here. Barry Lind. Here. Kenneth Irvin. Here. Karen Goodwin. Goodman. Karen Goodman. Here. Thought she was here. I am. Okay, I didn't hear you. Uh, Bruce Allen. Here. And James Boudry is absent, and I am Kyle Mosher. Um, and then I would ask for approval of the agenda. This is Ken, I'd so move. Motion by Ken, is there a second? This is Thad, I'll second. Second by Thad, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Aye. Oh, we gotta do a roll call, don't we? Yep. Sorry. Um, Bruce Allen. Yes. Karen Goodman. Yes. Ken Urban. Yes. Barry Lynn. Yes. Thad Taylor. Yes. Jody Walter. Yes. Tamara DePonio. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, public comment. Um, do we have any members of the public yet, Heather? No, there are no members of the public. Okay, thank you. Um, and um, discussion on proposed chamber agreement. Um, I just want to open this up to discussion. I hope that you've all had a chance to um, take a look at it and um, really just kind of want to get everybody's thoughts and um, see, see where we're at with this. This is Jody Walter. I have a question. Go ahead, Jody. Um, okay, so what I and I'm I hope that I sound clear by asking my question because I do support doing this. What how does the collaboration between the chamber and the DDA with this contractor um, agreement? I mean, what does the chamber get out of it? I guess is the only way I know how to put that. <laughs> well, um, I'll just answer and say they get paid. <laughs> um, Jody, this is yeah. Darren. I'll, I'll add to Kyle's. Yep, you get paid, but um, there are like several other pieces. I know that their economic development, you know, the county and the city have um, supported that position as well. And it's just kind of bringing everything under one umbrella so that we could have a cohesive yet um, a nimble approach to being able to get um, development done within within the county within the city so it is really kind of bringing everything close and and together um, so that you know we we better utilize our resources does that make okay sense? thank yeah thank you for clarifying that because it, it, it's not so much just downtown but it's all encompassing of the of the of the county is basically how I understand what you're saying then. Yes, that that um, that's exactly it. It's kind of a bigger picture, but they're all going to be in one spot. 
Okay. Thank you so much, Karen. Thanks, Jody. Yep. This is Ken. Uh, the horse may be on life support, but I'm going to continue to beat it. Uh, I, I see Bruce's comment in the email about the, the termination clause that we have in this agreement. But my un, the reason I'm uncomfortable with the agreement the way it is, is, is this. Let's say that we have an, a new event that the DDA once executed uh, to the benefit of our DDA uh, constituencies. And we, we put it in the scope of work. We tell the chamber to, that uh, the person that's running this, that we want this event executed. They agree that it's going to get executed and then it doesn't happen. Yeah, it's all well and good that we can terminate the agreement, but we have harmed every single member of our constituency by not having some penalty for non-performance. If you tell your kids, uh, if you don't clean up your room, you're not getting dinner, and then you feed them anyway, or in this case, if you tell the chamber that we want this executed and they don't do it, and there's no penalty for it, what's the incentive for them to do it other than the altruistic thing that uh, Karen just mentioned, which is economic benefit for the entire county? We have to have some kind of a legal agreement that says, here's what happens if you don't execute besides just straight termination. So that's where I'm having the biggest issue with this. Uh, Kyle, can I make a comment? Absolutely, and thank you, Ken. Is this, this Barry? Is Thad. This is oh, Thad. Thad, I'm sorry. Thanks, Thad, go ahead. Hey, Barry, I think one of us got offended. I don't know which, but <laughs> <laughs> That was definitely intentional. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, yeah. In response to Ken's um, comment, I think I, my my thought is is that there there's an inherent penalty if they don't perform and we terminate the agreement, and that is going to be their standing in the community and w within their membership, and that means you know that would mean you know their chamber members that they're not performing um, the duties as they said they would. And that's going to be a black eye on their entire organization. So I think that's a, you know, a pretty, pretty significant penalty that, that we can impose by terminating the agreement for non-performance. So let me then ask, this is Ken again, let me then ask what percentage of businesses in the DDA are members of the chamber? Is it 50%? Is it 100%? Is it 20%? Well, and, and this is bad again. This is bad again. I, I don't know, Ken. Um, and I wasn't looking at it specifically, um, you know, on, on the DDA members. Uh, I was looking at it across the whole organization of the chamber. You know, if they get the reputation of failing to perform services that they said they would, that's got ramifications outside of our agreement with the chamber. I mean, it could be some, you know, some um, businesses in Onekama or Bear Lake or whatever start questioning uh, the value of the chamber if they're not going to perform and should they, you know, maintain their membership. You know, to, to me, I think that's, that's a, a risk that uh, they run by not performing. And this Ken, one more time, I, I would say that if we have to ask ourselves as a board, if, if say only 20% of, of DDA businesses are members of the chamber, if that's the case, then are we willing to say to the, to the DDA constituency that they paid enough because we terminated their contract uh, when an event that we that that didn't happen uh, impacted every single member of the DDA, uh, every constituency. You know, that's I've I've run in, I've designed and 
and executed hundreds of contracts in my role as a CEO and a senior member of the C-suite. Uh, and I've never seen one that went south that they, they went south because we didn't have this kind of language in a contract. And I just want us to, I want us to be clean and, and make sure that when we want something done and they agree to it, it gets done other than just terminating the contract. Thanks. Thanks, Karen. Appreciate it. Uh, go ahead, Karen. This is Karen. I, you know, in part of um, the contract, you know, I, it, it is lean, and I know that the um, chamber likes them lean. Um, I've done this three times with them. Um, however, the piece that I was looking at and really was uh, scrutinizing was the job description. And so that um, in, in our government type of contracts and stuff like that, we kind of go off that job description. It's our responsibility as the board to hold them to that description. And in there was, I, you know, I, I did add some language in regards to performance and expectations, um, something that we would be monitoring every month at our board meeting. Um, and so that this would not spin away from us. You know, by the time a uh, event does not happen, I would imagine that, that I, I, I guess I can imagine in 30 days that we wouldn't catch that. Um, you know, or in between board meetings. It's, it's, it's um, part of that job performance in regards to your job description. And so, you know, in, in 30 days, we could be saying to the chamber, we're pulling this. Um, you know, and I kind of had the same discussion at the county level as, as the commissioner to say to that contract, you know, not going to play around with this. If you don't do it, we're done. Um, you know, we've been there, we've done that before. And so um, that's kind of the role that, you know, I can go with this agreement knowing that the job description is pretty specific. Thanks, Karen. Um, Kai, this is Kai. Kai. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. This is, this is Tamara. I'm, I'm just interested in Ken's um, opinion of what sort of, um, you know, penalty, is it punitive, is it monetary? What, what, what are you thinking of, um, Ken? What have you seen in contracts where we can hold somebody accountable without perhaps having to pull the entire contract? If there's a penalty in there that allows us to leave this in place without, you know, derailing or undermining or taking away everything, um, it, what, what is the, your suggestion or, or what, what would be the solution in your eyes? Thanks, Tamara. Uh, Tamara, my, I, I think we need at least something like that uh, contractual penalty language that Kyle shared. He shared my language in that email that, that basically says, look, if, if we tell you to do this chamber and you don't execute it, then we're going to incur costs as a DDA to hire somebody else to do the work to execute that event or that task. And we ought to at least have in our contract the ability to say, if you don't do this, then you're, you have to pay a contractual penalty equivalent to the cost incurred by the DDA to contract with another party to provide the services or execute the work. Uh, and so, because again, it's, and that wouldn't terminate the contract, but it would say, look, we, we told you we wanted this event to happen. Uh, you're not executing it. The deadline, the event is supposed to happen in 45 days. You haven't lifted one finger to execute it, or your execution to this point has been so poor that it appears that it's not going to happen. We need this to happen. So we're going to hire someone else to do it, and you're going to pay for it. You know, so that's, I mean, I think that would be a minimum, Tamara. Uh, we don't have to you know, but I think we have to have something in there. I think the agreement as it is opens us up to lots of criticism for just handing somebody money without any uh, recourse if something goes south other than just terminating it. Ken, Thanks, Ken. this is Jody. Yeah. I yes, have Paul. a 
I'd like to add on to what you're saying because I'm just reading your language that Kyle sent out this morning in here, and I agree with what you're saying. Um, I like what you're saying, and I think that the not only should the penalty be, or perhaps this is to be considered, of the cost incurred by the DDA for the scope of work, but what about the time that is paid to the contractor? So in the price and terms, it says that we're going to pay $75,000 in the annual compensation. What if in that 30 days, those, that, those monies that would be paid would also be comp re compensated to the DDA? Uh, this is Kyle. Thank, thank you, Jody. I, I also just want to remind everyone that this contract that's that we're all looking at is a compilation of two things. It's a compilation of our existing economic development contract with the chamber, and it's also the job description portion of it. It was Caitlin's job description and what we based her performance evaluation on. Just so that's that's how this this proposal came about was essentially two documents that we've already previously put together and agreed upon um, just to put it out there. Kyle, a, a follow-up question on that then is, does this then re also replace the economic development agreement? It or does, does not. still exist? That still exists. That was not part of a, any discussion that, that, that I was in. So, okay. No. That, that just when you said combine, I just wanted to make sure I understood what you meant. Um, yeah, I meant I meant basically yeah. we took Caitlin's job description and then the existing contract for economic development with the chamber and used that as sort of a template to put this together. Although I, having worked on that existing contract, there is a lot more language in that contract around performance and monitoring performance than exists in here, um, which I okay. think is kind of where we're, you know, discussing things. Okay. Since you bring up that other agreement, it, this is in some ways a minute point, I think, in the discussion, but I don't want it to be overlooked, is the existing um, economic development agreement basically has the responsibility for monitoring that and kind of working with the chamber on that, being in the hands of the director, which if we are to proceed down this, basically then the chamber would be responsible for monitoring the chamber's execution of that agreement. And I think we're gonna need to address how we, I think we're gonna need to relook at that contract in light of this because that doesn't make sense to me that the same entity is responsible for monitoring and performing. Yeah, okay. Great. Um, since I'm kind of talking now, I just, I'll just kind of chime in on the conversation so far. And um, the, the, I guess I first want to um, address Thad's, um, you know, discussion around the chamber wanting to perform well because this could impact them. And I understand that line of thinking, but I also think that that's not as clear cut as it may sound because if there was a reason of non-performance, often those things are not black and white. There are often a lot of gray and a lot of disagreement between the two parties, whether or not non-performance occurred or not occurred, et cetera. So, you know, we could potentially go down a path, um, terminate, and the in the realm of public perception, we could have be viewed as the party at fault, not the chamber, and therefore the chamber would have no um, negative repercussion potentially. So I don't think that that's as clear cut um, as it could be. Uh, the other thing is, while I'm ag ag agree with. Um, Ken's comments broadly, I think this is an area of the contract that is weak, is really these performance measures and consequences. Um, the thing that jumps out at me that I, from my perspective, 
goes some way to address this is the 180 day separation notice. Um, to me, that's way too long. If we're at the point of saying they're not performing and we want out, paying them another $37,000 um, for six more months doesn't make sense to me. I, I think that should be more like 60 days if we get to that point. And I think that also addresses some of that impact um, of non-performance is it, it's, you know, that's, it's a more realistic, I think, um, number than 180 days. Um, okay. So I, Thanks, I guess those are my comments right now. I, I, and I, I did want to bring that up too, Barry. I think that that contract is way too long for termination. Um, you know, like you said, especially if it's not performance. So, and I didn't think it was that long in our economic development um, contract, but I, I can't remember anymore, unfortunately. Kyle, this, this is Stan. Just another comment. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering if we have a non-performance and we're um, looking to. Get, Claw back money from the deed or from the chamber. I mean, what kind of a? I mean, certainly, I think that would potentially end up in litigation. And just wanted to throw out that out there is is it worth that? And I, I don't have the answer to that. Yeah, I and I guess I kind of look at this a little bit more pragmatically, and it's not necessary. It you know, I look at it like, hey, look, we're hiring the the chamber to to do the job of the dda director it's not that much different than actually employing a director and we're all adults in the room and at the end of the day if we don't like what's happening or if you know we need to tweak some things we sit down and we talk about it no different than we would with a, a chamber director so i i know that's fairly lean and black and white but that's really what's going to end up happening um and we're, we're talking about some extremes here, but I, I really think that this, uh, I've always looked at this as just, hey, we're not the employer anymore. We all have the same common goals for the most part. And uh, in a lot of cases, um, the chamber's already doing some of this stuff um, and, and has been uh, before and after we've, we've had a DDA director. Um, yeah, this is Bruce Allen. Can I say something? Absolutely. So uh, I, I just want to point out something here. You know, I, uh, I understand Ken's objection. Uh, and, and in different circumstances, I would agree with him. Uh, since I retired uh, last year and moved here, I'm constantly slapping myself and reminding myself that this is a small community. Uh, <laughs> And we're all sharing the same, the same water in a fishbowl. Uh, you know, we do stuff together. Uh, and, you know, the, the, we're contracting with the chamber to provide services, yes. But they are not a vendor to us. They're our community partner. Now, what this argues to me is to say, should we be entering into, you know, a vend if we want to have a vendor agreement, uh, it should be structured like a vendor agreement, and we shouldn't be doing it with a community partner. Uh, now, the problem that arises is I don't see anybody else who can provide these services for us. Uh, you know, community partners, uh, you treat differently and you structure agreements differently than you would if it was a vendor. Uh, Thad's point is the correct one. There is a tremendous downside to them not, not performing. There's a tremendous downside to us being in conflict with the chamber. So if it gets to that point, uh, you know, the, the damages are not the big issue. The, de the, the big issue, the one that really hurts us, is the damage of the relationship. Now, 
then you have to ask yourself, should we be going into, you know, if you want to have a vendor agreement, should you do it with a community partner? One that where there are such severe consequences to getting into conflict with. That's, that's it. I'm sorry. Thank, thanks, Bruce. Um, this also is not really a new, uh, a new concept, even for the Manistee DDA. Um, 20 years ago, the, the chamber, um, you know, under Mecca ran the DDA. And I don't think there was a contract at all. It was just that that's how it was administered. Yeah. One other thing I, I see that being said, I'm not arguing against this. I think, you know, as sure. I said, I think the agreement is fine. It's appropriate for a, an agreement between community partners one that share a common interest. Now we got to be mindful of that going forward. And anytime our interests diverge, we have to be aware of that. But, you know, our interests are, are completely intertwined with those of the chamber. Thanks, Bruce. Um, this is Barry. Um, I want to latch on to something that Kyle said a little bit earlier. And, you know, as you were describing it, Kyle, you described it as instead of a person doing the work, we have a legal entity doing it. But from your perspective, that isn't that much different. And I, I can understand that line of thinking. And I, I think I would agree with that. But I would also say, though, is that if, you know, we have a person in this role, we also, as a board, have a process on how we evaluate that person's performance. Um, and I think that that evaluation maybe is lacking in this agreement. You know, so for example, when we've in recent memory brought on a new director, we have a six month performance review that the board does in a fairly formal way um, right. to measure and, you know, kind of both build consensus within the board on the perception of the board on performance, as well as inform um, the director as to expectations and their level of, of, you know, follow through on the items that the board has asked. I think something along those lines would would be appropriate in this agreement, whether it be, you know, every three months, a, you know, review of performance every six months, I think annually is maybe too short or too long. Um, I, I think I would kind of recommend every six months that the board do an evaluation um, of performance like it would do if it was a, an individual person. Thanks, Barry. Uh, Ken, uh, uh, Ken do, is that kind of what you're looking for? Um, I, I think Barry is, is absolutely correct that a shorter uh, cycle time for performance assessment is always better. It's more work for whoever's supervising that work, uh, but we're bored so we can kind of spread it out. Uh, so that's a definite benefit. Um, I, yeah, that that's helpful, but I still think that we need some kind of, if, if, and I, and I agree with the suggestion from Barry also that we, and others that we go to 60 days versus 180. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I still am uncomfortable if we don't have some kind of way of clawing back something if, if we incur extra costs because uh, if we get to a termination of this agreement, then things have already gone south. Uh, so that means we're going to incur, and, and I really don't expect that we will, but that means we'll incur additional costs of hiring somebody, of of not getting work done, the opportunity cost of not executing work because we're on the outs with our vendor. Um, I, I just think it's too, 
too risky and no, not anything against you, Bruce, but I think it's, yeah, we are a small town, but sometimes those are the, and we do have overlapping interests, but sometimes those close relationships are the ones where uh, you need that kind of clarity the most rather than just relying on goodwill. Uh, I, I've just had too many contracting experiences where we went in with thinking everything was great and lots of goodwill and then uh, things went south. Uh, so you can't rely on goodwill. Uh, I, I just don't think that that's the prudent thing to do. But also saying that, I, I the board's about consensus and consensus doesn't mean agreement. It just means that you're willing to support the, the consensus of the group. So I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to obstruct anything here. I, but I just want to be very clear what my concerns are. Yeah. Appreciate that, Ken. And this is Can very, and um, so I was just going to say is that, you know, thinking on that consensus is we've been talking now half hour on this and not one single comment has been about not putting together agreement with the chamber. So I hearing, you know, 100% unanimous consensus that this is the direction we want to go. Yeah, we're talking about finer points in language in a contract. Um, and I think, you know, we can ease, I mean, I don't know how easily it will be, but I think we can tie those loose ends up. I mean, I'm very encouraged by the questions I'm hearing because I, I wasn't sure that, you know, given past history of this board, that this was a universal direction that the board wanted to go in. But I'm hearing that today, and I think that's a very good thing. Thanks, Barry. Go ahead, Ted. Yeah, I just, you know, I think I'm, a, I'm uncomfortable with punitive damages uh, for non-performance. I think that that gets us off on the wrong foot and saying, you know, we don't know that we fully trust you um, to perform, and that's you know I don't want I don't want to set that send that signal at the onset. Uh, I think Bruce brings up a great point uh, in the fact that uh, the chamber is one of our uh, community partners and has shown, and at least to me, that their willingness to work with the with the community. So I, I just am not un, I'm not comfortable with punitive damages. I think it sends the wrong signal that we're yeah we're okay, but we're not fully committed and we don't fully trust. So okay. I I would you know I would be comfortable if we shortened that termination to 60 days, and I think that would be a good middle ground. And this this is Karen. Pat, I I think you're right. You know it is a thing of you know yes let's yeah, shorten yeah. it. The other piece. The other piece of this um, is that we really, really have to stick to this job description and the expectations. I'm not thinking about punitive, but I am thinking about holding accountability. And so as a group, even monthly, we put it on our agenda that we do an overview of the director's, you know, uh, performance or whatever. I, you know, when I, when I hire, I've got people, you know, checked in at 30, 60, 90 days. You know, that is the expectation. You will be evaluated at these times, and here is what you're going to be improving upon. Um, and I think that the, that job description is our roadmap to, a, to our expectation of what this person will do. And if they're not doing it, then we're catching it right away. Thanks, Karen. I'll just say, this is Kyle, I'll, I'll put it out there that I would, <laughs> in the interest of moving this forward, I would entertain a motion with proposed changes to, to continue this discussion or um, whatever that looks like also. Um, Kyle, um, Kyle, can I make a Yes, go ahead, Chad. I just, another uh, comment. Are we, I've heard Karen talk a couple of times and some others about the job description. I was kind of under the impression that the disagreement we're looking at is, includes a lot of what our expectations are in a director, and so is, in essence, our job description. So 
I just want to yeah. clarify, are we looking at an agreement plus a job description? I, this I, is Karen. I would say that this agreement, absolutely, then I would go back and say, nope, doesn't cover our expectations. I would prefer to see a job description uh, outlined. We, we want a director, and this is what we want in that director. We're looking for these skills. We're looking for these abilities. We're looking for this education. That's what we want. Now, if that's not going to be attached to this agreement, then we better put it in the agreement. Well, I'll just say that this this was the job description, essentially, that we put out there for Caitlin, and especially in the action items. Yeah, I, I was going to say, Kyle, that in in your original email that you sent out, you had a copy of the job description. And in going yeah. through the job descriptions, duties and responsibilities, and what's in this agreement, they're almost identical word for word. Um, yeah, so it, there I was some see, copying and pasting. I see that the job description has been incorporated into here. It doesn't have some of the things Karen just mentioned, like qualifications and some of those expectations. Um, and I, I, I think I'm indifferent as to is that relevant or not. Um, but I see what we're looking at as being the one document um, as I see it, that would be the totality of our expectations. Kyle? Is, is, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pat. Well, no, Pat, I was, are, are, this, this is Bruce. This is Bruce. Okay, uh, go ahead, Bruce. There's a, I, I think uh, the, the language that we're using to talk about this, you know, sometimes overlaps with the language that we would use if we were hiring a person. Uh, and in this case, we're not necessarily going to end up with a person. If I were the chamber, uh, you know, there are some kinds of tasks that I might, I, I might, I'm not saying, I, I have no idea how they plan to fulfill this with one person or with uh, you know, pieces of several people. Uh, but it's not necessarily going to be a person. Uh, the point I, I think you were making earlier, Karen, about, you know, checking, checking uh, performance against uh, expectations regularly. And I think that that should be monthly, you know, with, you know, here are the things that were supposed to be done this month and here's the way that they were done and here's, what we what we like and what we dislike uh and doing that intensely particularly at the beginning i think is a terrific idea uh, but it may not be a person it may be several people That's and it. just to add, thank you bruce and just to add to that the discussions that i have had have been that by, by and large there would be a a person some of things some things would be shared but by and large and especially in terms of the day-to-day -day stuff and um you know, board meetings and, and that type of representation, the intention is a person. I, 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 do, I, I do appreciate uh, Go ahead, Thad. No, I think somebody else was. Okay, go ahead, Karen. I, was Karen. I, just, I just wanted to say, I do appreciate that clarification. You know, that is true. I'm, I'm thinking more of that HR employee type of thing, but you know, um, it is good to have that broader perspective and, and I'm glad for that clarification. Thanks, Karen. Go ahead, Tad. Kyle, this is yes. Tamara. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Tamara. I was just going to say that I would support your initial thought, which is to, you know, um, go forward with the agreement with further discussion on, you know, details or, or language, et cetera. Okay, Thanks. Kyle. Thanks, Tam. You, go ahead, Tad. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the agreement uh, presented to us from the Manistee County Chamber of Commerce uh, with, with the change in the termination from 180 days to 60 days and authorize uh, the chair to uh, get, meet and discuss with the chamber. Okay, so first, Alan, I'll second that. Okay, 
So we have a motion from Thad Taylor, second from Bruce Allen. Um, and uh, for the proposed um, agreement as written with the change um, changes from 180 days to 60 days uh, under uh, the termination. Did, did I get that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Is there any discussion? This is Barry. Yes, I um, think. Go ahead, Barry. Okay. Um, we've been talking about this at a high level. Um, I think there's a number of lower level wording and thing changes that I've noted that we haven't had, even had a chance to talk about. So I guess I'm uncomfortable just approving oh, yeah, yeah. the document as it is presented. Um, I think it still needs a couple more tweaks and I can go into my notes if oh, yeah. um, we want yeah. to. Um, but I mean, I, that's okay. just where I'm starting off with. I, I think it's premature to approve something oh, yeah. Yeah. without um, oh, yeah. having a discussion about the exact wording of things. And we really haven't had that conversation yet. Okay, oh. uh, Tamara, did you have something? Yes, I would agree with what Barry is saying. I, that's why I was going back to your original, what you said originally was, um, Kyle, was that you wanted to move forward with this with further discussion of the language and so forth in here. I don't want to just make this about two things. I think there's more details that we need to shore up and look at. Okay, so we have a motion in a second. On the on the floor. Um, I would go ahead, I guess, and call for roll call. Roll well, call. Actually, I guess I, I'll I'll say one more thing. This is Barry again. Um, the the motion I was going to make, if Thad hadn't made his motion, was that based on the consensuses that we've reached today in this conversation that um, we let the assigned committee come back with a final document oh, yeah. that incorporates all the wording changes and is reviewed with the chamber to make sure that they're in agreement um, for that approval. Because um, I mean, okay, we did thanks, appoint Barry. a committee to work on this. I know Ken is one of the members of that committee and he has probably so far voiced the strongest um, objections, yeah, yeah. but it's a three person committee, so he can be overruled. So, and what I heard earlier was his willingness to um, say his piece, but then, you know, do the right thing and agree. So I, I just think that there's, that is a logical next step. And I know that takes more time and that's a problem. And I understand why we want to get something done quickly as well. Kyle, this is Thad. Go ahead, Thad. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit bewildered. We've talked about this for 45 minutes, and we've had this, our board's had this for, I don't know, a week or more, and nobody's provided comments. And now for the first time I'm hearing there's, other things that we need to do with this document, but I don't understand what they are. Okay. Thanks, Ed. Well, so I we mean, still again, have- I, I said I, I'm willing to go into my comments. Um, I'm just kind of wondering if that's what the board would like is to go to that level of, of discussion. I, I guess I, so, I mean, no, no one else to, to say anything, I guess I will go into it. So. The second to last bullet point under responsibilities and duties is, is really talking about the expectation of, in this case, the chamber with support of events. And I think there's an event that we currently have that does not fit into this traditional category of events, and that is Spark. Um, Spark is more of a business development activity than it is an event, but it is an event as well. And I know in the last two Spark cycles, our director has, has gotten very involved in it 
because of the nature of the business activity or the business development activity that that event does. And I think this language here, while is fine for our traditional events, you know, sleigh bell, hops and props, and those types of things, I think it is limiting on the involvement we would expect on something like Spark. So um, that was my I'll, first. I'll go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I'll just comment on that. That when it when in discussions that I've had with the chamber, when it came to events. I'll just that that was a major concern is that what level of involvement are they going to be required to have and um, I I kind of said my expectation would be similar to that of uh, the DDA um, um, administrator and that if that event is chaired then the then the event moves forward but if it's not chaired it, it doesn't move forward and so uh, there's definitely concern there on the chamber's part for how much they could get involved in events and um, I understand that and, and respect that and I don't think that I personally don't want our DDA um, uh, administrator to be focusing on events I, I completely agree, and I, I don't have an issue with this point for all events, except I treat think of Spark as different because of the nature of what it is. Um, so that was my first comment. The other two things I have get into the price and terms um, point. Okay. And this is language that I'm seeing did come out of our agreement with the chamber on um, economic development. And in the, the first bullet towards the end, it talks about payment on a monthly basis upon receipt of detailed invoicing of services rendered or to be rendered in the month having language that says detailed invoicing, I don't understand what that means in the context of this agreement. Um, I understand it in the context of the economic development agreement, but are we expecting here that they're gonna be tracking every hour their staff puts in and every month we're going to get that as a detailed invoice associated with the one twelfth of seventy five hundred dollars. I just well, I I think that a I think that like a uh, timesheet or something would be important. I mean, we want to know what they're putting the hours in. It it's just to me that language needs more to be more specified because I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure they would know what it means. And that as a term in a contract, how do we know if we're getting detailed invoicing if it's really not specified? So that was the one. And then the last bullet point in that term is invoice verifications and payments will be approved by the DDA chair and vice chair. What that says to me is that those payments need two approvals and it must be the DDA chair and vice chair. I'm concerned that that doesn't provide any flexibility if one of those two individuals isn't around. Um, it's kind of like the same reason we have a, a wide variety of check signers because sometimes it's really hard to um, get two people around at any particular time. Um, so I just think that that point needs a little more thought as to are we saying it's like check signing and you need two, and I think our check signers are, are the executive committee, so I think that's four people. Is it two of those four or does it have to be these two or is it just one of these two? I'm not sure what that point is trying to accomplish. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Barry. I Kyle, this is Thad. Can yep. I make a comment? 
of course. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to withdraw my motion. Uh, I thought we were at a different point, and apparently we're not. I would just um, ask to withdraw that motion, and then make a new motion that the committee um, take all of the comments that uh, has been received today, and either amend this draft or just meet with the chamber and get another uh, a modified draft for our consideration. Okay, <clears throat> so Thad's motion has been withdrawn. I'm perfectly willing to do that. Um, I think that we're close. Um, I would imagine that, that Ken and Bruce would be willing to do that as well. Can I speak for you guys? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, I would also appreciate um, any comments um, or suggestions in writing, um, in email form, if that's appropriate. Um, I can obviously listen to the minutes of this meeting, but it would I, it'd be nice to have those. Um, so, Barry, you know, and, and anybody else that has any suggestions, that would be appreciated. And, and um, go well, ahead, Barry. Yes, there was a motion, but there's not support yet, so I shouldn't jump to talking. Um, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, there was a motion. I apologize. Is there a second? I second. This is, Jody. This okay. is Tamara. Okay, so I have a motion by Thad, second from Tamara, I believe. Um, any further discussion on that motion? Um, yeah, just one comment. Uh, as I, I guess hearing what Thad said earlier is maybe I had a different understanding of the purpose of this meeting. Um, I thought this meeting was really to hammer out consensus around the structure of agreement not to approve final language. So I didn't submit these comments because I didn't think that was the purpose yet because what we were presented with was a draft document, sets of comments that were very divergent. And I just didn't think that this meeting we were at the point of being ready to approve final language. So I, I, I apologize that I maybe misunderstood the purpose of this meeting. No apology necessary. Um, I think I wanted the meeting to turn into a discussion, and and if there's consensus, there's consensus. But um, we're I, I I think that we're close, and um, I uh, I would like to bring this to the next uh, regular board meeting. Um, so I think that we can get together between now and then. So uh, there's. I need to go ask ahead. who made the who seconded the motion since I'm supposed to be taking uh, minutes. Tam, Tam, Tamra did. Tamra. So without, if, if there's no further discussion on the motion, I'll take a roll call. Uh, Tamra. Yes. Jody. Support. Thad. Yes. Barry. Yes. Kenneth. Yes. Karen. Yes. Bruce? Yes. And I'm Kyle and I support it as well. Um, so I think that wraps up uh, item four on the agenda. Um, moving on to public comment. I don't think that we have anybody else join that has joined us from the public, but if so, um, speak up if you have any comments. Um, I, uh, is there any further board member comments? The, just Kyle, since I'm in Zoom, the only person that has joined is um, the news advocate. Thank you. And I would uh, want to thank Heather for helping us out on this meeting and uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion to Karen Goodman. Thanks, this Karen. Thad, I'll support it. All right. Thanks, Thad. Uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, look forward to continuing this uh, at our next meeting. Thank you. Bye. Have a, thanks, have a great Kyle. day.